We're, we're live. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I'm really excited about tonight's presentation, and I'm sure you'll all find it both interesting and informative. If you haven't already, I'd be recommending that you grab a pen and paper, as you may wish to make several notes about uh, some of the key points that our presenter, Dyka Brutigam, has to say tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dale Flynn and I'm one of the directors at Shabello Equestrian in Adelaide, South Australia. We are a proud stockist of Springer and our range is continually growing to meet the demand. Our company also acts as the Australian agents for Springer and we're absolutely delighted that we can work, that we've been able to work in collaboration with Springer to bring you tonight's proceedings. Should you have any queries following tonight or wish to see some of the Springer range that we have available, please visit our website at www.shabello.com.au or if you wish to speak with me direct, please contact or drop me an email at dale, that's D-A-L-E, at shabello.com.au. I'm now going to pass tonight's proceedings on to Dyka Brutigam, who is making tonight's presentation from one of her offices in Germany. Dyka, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with us tonight. We're all really excited about what you've got to say, and I promise none of us will be critiquing your English tonight. So over to you. All right. Can you see me? Can you hear me, Dale? Okay. Well then, hello everybody in Australia. Good evening and good morning from Germany. I hope you and your families and friends are well. And I really appreciate that you all came here to learn something about Sprenger and um, about the bits we produce and our products. And on behalf of Sprenger, I would like to welcome you and thank you for your interest. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to, juice, to introduce our company to you and, of course, our philosophy and our products. The German company Sprenger started off as a factory for spurs in 1872. Later, they have been added the production of driving harnesses, bits and stirrups. And until now, we are the leading manufacturer of spurs, stirrups and bits. What many equestrians don't know is that we do not only produce equestrian products, but also equipment for dog and boat sports, such as dog collars, chains, and boat fittings. Our unique selling point is the focus on functional products developed based on scientific research in order to meet the anatomical and individual needs of the horses. Our intention is to create products that help the horse by improving the communication between horse and rider, instead of helping the rider to dominate and control the horse. Sprenger produces and manufactures the majority of the products in Germany. Other bit suppliers either source their products from the Far East completely or source parts from there and uh, only assemble them in Europe. We are proud that all our sensor gun bits and 90% of our products are made in Germany and manufactured in our own um, production site. This comes along with many advantages such as eco-friendly and short transport routes, um, the complete quality control uh, along the entire production process. We have no dependence on sub-suppliers, which is very important, uh, for example, in Corona times. And of course, there's a reduced risk of product copies. As you can see on these images, each bit requires a lot of handcrafting. And it is a minimum of 25 
working steps uh, that every bit goes through. On average, at Schwenger, we produce a thousand bits per week. There are a lot of world leading writers in all English disciplines using Springer products. To name only a few, we work together with Ingrid Klimke, Charlotte Dujardin, Karl Hester, Laura Tomlinson, Markus Ening, Jessica von Bredo Werndl, and a lot more. With many of them, we work closely together, fit bits to their horses. And also we use their experience and, and knowledge for test writing our products, our new products and products that are still in the development process. But before going ahead and talking about bits in detail, I think it is very important to define what is the purpose of the bit. And as the mouth is one of the most sensitive parts of the horse's body, it is very important to treat it carefully. And therefore, a bit should be fitted and sized to the in individual anatomic shape of the horse's mouth, as well as to its characteristic needs. The basic requirements for the right bit choice are a healthy and properly trained horse, a sensitive rider's hand, and a correctly fitted bridle. It is very important that everybody understands that a bit is neither meant to force or dominate the horse, nor to fix any training issues and rideability problems. A bit is rather to be understood as a communication tool that transmits the rider's aids to the horse. And the better this tool is adapted to the anatomic needs of the horse, the better the commun communication will be. As a bit is a foreign object in the mouth, it is to be fitted the most comfortable and suitable for the horse. And um, this means it should be perfectly fitting in size, which means the thickness and the width of the bit in the shape and of course, we need to choose for the correct bit material. There are a lot of different bit materials available on the market and the most common ones are, for example, rubber and plastic and metal bits. In general, plastic and rubber bits are a lot softer than metal bits. Um, these bits are mainly recommended for horses with a sensitive mouth. Metal bits, therefore, are very strong, durable, and have a smooth surface. There are some metals that also enhance the chewing activity and the flow of the saliva of the horses. When we talk about rubber and plastic bits, it is very important to know that the surface is soft, but also coarse. So you need to consider that these materials are softer than metal and unlike metal, these materials do not resist a horse chewing or biting on it. Therefore, it is important to have a steel cable inside to prevent the horse biting the material through. If you use rubber or plastic bits with a coarse surface, you always need to guarantee that your horse chews a lot and has a lot of saliva because what happens when you use this bit or these bits on a dry mouth is um, um, a so-called eraser effect. I think everybody knows the eraser effect. From school, it's like if you, I use a paper and if you rub the bit on the paper, I don't know if you can see it well, probably not, but you see the, the black part here. This is like it rubs on the skin of the horse. And if you use a rubber bit, rub it on your fingers and on your skin, you can feel it's getting warm. And this is not what you want because it can cause injuries or bruises. And especially on horses with sensitive corners of the mouth, 
people tend to use rubber bits but it will make it worse if you do not have a have a wet mouth so always guarantee that there's a lot of flow of saliva for using rubber or plastic bits the surface as we already said of metal uh, of plastic bits is normally smoother than on rubber bits if you have for example a soft plastic or um, a hard plastic it is smoother than uh, rubber bits but still um, it is not as solid as metal and if the horse bites on it you can get chew marks i have one set example here i can show you as you can see here there's chew marks on the bit so the harder the plastic is the more likely these two marks are to hurt your horse. So please, if you use these kinds of bits, especially for sensitive horses, always look at the bits before you use them and test them on two marks. When it comes to metal bits, we have different metals. I think everybody knows the normal stainless steel quality and stainless steel is an alloy of iron, nickel and chrome which is very durable and solid but it contains nickel and we know that some horses have problems with nickel. Um, the first ever created um, bit material developed for the use in the horse's mouth was made by, by Sprenger. And um, this was a bit material called Oregon. We can see Sensogar now, which is the further development of Oregon. And the reason why we produced or invented this material is because we used copper as a bit material. Stainless steel, as we said, is a um, very solid and durable um, metal but it contains nickel and it is neutral. That means it doesn't oxidate. The reason why we use copper in Sensogan or as a bit material is because it oxidates and it, um, due to the oxidation, it, it is like a sweet taste for the horse and that enhances the chewing activity. The problem of copper is that is, it is very soft and you need other um, compositions to harden the copper. And depending on what you use on copper or to harden the copper, you have, uh, you influence the oxidation process. For Sensogan, we use um, manganese and zinc to harden the copper, which is quite hard to work with and it is expensive. Common copper alloys, it, this is almost every copper alloy except Sensogan and Oregon, they use aluminum to harden the copper. The problem of aluminum is that it stops the oxidation process. So if we talk about Sensogan, um, please be aware that this is the only bit material that has been developed together with a veterinarian university, has tried and test, has been tried and tested by professional riders, and we have done toxicological tests and proven that there is um, no nickel or anything in there that can harm your horse. I have already told you about the oxidation process and what you can see here on the left side is the oxidation properties of the copper, which is too soft to be used as a bit material on its own. The more black spots, the better the oxidation. And what you can clearly see is that there is a good, very good oxidation function on the Sensogan bits and almost none on the aluminium bronze bits, uh, which is the common copper alloys hardened with aluminium. So these copper alloys are almost as neutral as stainless steel for your horses. To conclude the chapter of bit materials, if you use rubber or softer plastic bits 
Um, please always ensure it is non-toxic, it is um, UV resistant, it is solvent free, and you have a steel cable to prevent it from getting brittle or bitten through. In our opinion, the best bit material you can use for your horse is the Sensogun bit material because it enhances the saliva flow. It is uh, non-toxic for your horse. It has been proven and tested and it is solid, durable and has a smooth surface. So after we have decided our, for our bit material for our horse, it is of course very important to consider some, some more aspects on the way to find the right bit for your horse. And um, even if there is, um, if there are several standard bits that um, can be used for all disciplines, for jumping horses, um, you often re require different bits than for a dressage horse. So the use of the horse plays a very big role for the decision of your bit. Bits for competition horses also have to fulfill the requirements of the discipline and the rules and regulation of the responsible associations. So this also takes, uh, takes uh, part in the bit choice. And um, another important point is the level of education, but not only of your horse, also of the rider. Because if you introduce a young horse to a bit, you would, of course, use a different, ho a different bit than a full trained dressage horse. Same for the rider. If you are a beginner and starter, you have not really a lot control over your hands, so you should really use a soft bit that you can handle. The character and temper of the horse plays also a big role because uh, if you have a, a very, very strong horse, um, you would definitely use a different bit than a sensitive horse. Um, so always consider or think of what shape and, and style of bit might meet the character of your horse. And then there's another important aspect, the anatomical conditions in the horse's mouth. And this is what we will talk about in detail now because most of you, um, I guess, have never looked inside the mouth of your horse. So this is what we will do now. Together with the Veterinarian University of Hanover, Sprenger has made research in order to find, um, find out more information about the inside of the horse's mouth. How, how is um, the situation? How much space do we have for the bit? And um, I don't know if it's the same in, in Australia, but in Germany, every biter gets told that the thicker a bit is, the softer it is. After we have done this study, we found out that there is, on many horses, there is not enough space to ride them with a very thick bit. So um, I will just go uh, through the findings that we found in the, in the study and explain about the anatomical conditions inside the horse's mouth. What you can see here is the skull of the horse um, and the black part in the middle. I'm gonna change to the pointer so you can see it. This black part in the middle is uh, filled with a tongue. And the letter D marks the position where the bit lies. So you can see there is no teeth around here and there's distance between the bit and the molars. So um, this distance between the upper and the lower jaw limits the space for the bit. And after we have made these measurements, we found that on average, the distance between the upper and lower jaw is around three and a half 
centimeters. And this does not uh, depend on the size of the horse or the age of the horse. So you can have a pony with a larger oral cavity than a normal warm blood horse. If we now look onto the lower jaw, you can see mark with the letter E where the bit lies. And what you also see is the lower jaw bones. These are right here. And as you can also see, these bones are quite spiky. These bones can be compared to your shin bone. It is a quite spiky bone covered by a thin, very thin layer of skin. And it is a very, very sensitive part of our body and of course of the horse's body. And without the tongue, we would never be able to ride a horse with a bit because the tongue lays over the lower jaw bones like a cushion. Um, the most important measurement of the lower jaw for the bit choice is the distance between the lower jaw bones. And this distance on average has also been measured measured uh, around three and a half centimeters. So this will um, get important later. So please remember the distance, three and a half centimeters between upper and lower jaw and between the lower jaw bones. So the red part you can see here is the tongue that, as I said, covered the lower jaw bones. It lies beneath uh, the teeth and acts like a cushion for the bit. The measurements of the tongue um, are very different from each horse and because the tongue is a muscle, um, it varies a lot in shape and um, size and thickness. On average, you, s you can say that the tongue always is wider than the lower jaw bones. And um, a normal tongue is between two and two and a half centimeters. So if you remember that the distance between upper and lower jaw is three and a half centimeters, and then you imagine that the tongue fills this oral cavity, as we can see here, the tongue lies in, in between the upper and lower jaw and is around two to two and a half centimeters. That leaves us not much space for the bit. To conclude the findings of the measurement of the horse's heads, um, it is very important to note that as I said, there is no correlation between the age of the horse, the size of the horse, or the length of the head, and the oral cavity of the horse. So never go ahead and say, okay, this is a, a huge horse, we can use a thick bit. And another important fact is that the distance between the left and right lower jaw bones and upper jaw bones can be different on each side. So it can happen that you use a bit, for example, of 80 millimeter thickness, and it is perfect fit, perfectly fitting on the right side for the horse, but not fitting on the left side. This can also happen. But uh, using bits, we do not only affect the tongue inside the horse's mouth, but also some influence points around the horse's head. There are four influence points we address when using different bit types. The first one is the tongue, which is affected by every bit containing a mouthpiece. For example, loose ring snaffles, egg bud snaffles, D-ring and full cheek bits only act onto the tongue. Other bits additionally influence the pole and the neutral ligament. All bits with leverage effects, such as, for example, multi-ring bits, three-ring or gag bits, 
um, are designed to put pressure on the pole and the nuchal ligament, which is a very, very sensitive part of the horse and should always be treated with, with great care and with sensitive hands, of course. If you use a three ring bit with a chin strap or a pelham or a Weymouth bit, you also have um, have another um, influence point you affect, which is the chin groove. Curb straps or curb chains are used to limit the pressure on the pole and um, to put pressure on the lower jaw. And the lower jaw bones are covered with a very, very thin and sensitive layer of skin. Therefore, if you ride a horse with a curb chain, we always recommend to use a curb chain guard to cushion the, the chain and to cover the soft bone. The nose ridge is a point that is also influenced uh, by bits or can be influenced. For example, if you use a hackamore or a combination with a bit and a hackamore or um, a separate um, nose strap, additional nose band. So what you can see here is um, very important when you fit the bridle because a bit always works in correlation with the bridle. As we have the skull here um, with some important points, I would like to emphasize that This hole right here is where all the nerves get out of the skull and transmit around the horse's head. So this is a very, very sensitive point of the horse. There's another one here. And on this point, you never want any nose bend. This is another important um, bone, the cheekbone, which is also sometimes quite spiky and you never want the nose bend on here as well. And then there's another part, the nose ridge, which you can see gets very thin and thin and spiky the lower you get. So you always want the nose bend on the upper third of the nose ridge. So if you put on your bridle, you always need to ensure that the bit lies here, not too close to the molars and that your nose bend lies underneath the point where the nerves get out of the skull, underneath the cheekbone and over the upper third or on the upper third of the nose ridge. When we talk about bit types and their effect, <clears throat> we will um, talk in detail about different mouthpieces later. But please uh, note that there um, is a different effect of the mouthpiece and an additional effect of the side pieces of the bits. Um, loose ring snaffles, as I said, only act on the tongue. So you pu pull the rein, you get pressure on the tongue and communicate with the horse over the tongue. Bits with fixed cheeks, such as eggbutt, deering, or full cheek bits, um, also only act on the tongue. There is no leverage effect on these bits. The difference between a loose ring and an eggbutt bit is on a loose ring. The mouthpiece is not fixed to the cheeks. So if a horse just moves the head or lifts the tongue, it is easier and more flexible. So the ring can run free. When you choose the size of a loose ring snaffle, the perfect size is three to five millimeter distance between the corner of the mouth and the bit ring. And you always want the ring to run free. If you have the bit too large, for example, a centimeter in between here, and you pull the rein, 
what will happen is you will pull the bit in direction to the teeth. And if you have a horse, horse with, a, um, with a very fleshy inside corner of the mouth, you might get problems sticking the fleshy skin between the teeth and the bit. Egg butt bits, compared to it, have a mouthpiece fixed to the cheeks. That means that if the horse pushes against your hand or you have a close contact, you always have contact to the tongue immediately. So this bit lies more quiet in the horse's mouth, but it's a bit more direct because it is not as flexible as a loose ring. You have this part on the lateral uh, side of the horse's mouth. And this is why you want these bits to fit closely to the corners of the horse's mouth because you don't want it to, to be shifting or tilting. And if this fits as close as this, it is perfect. Of course, you don't want any bit to pinch your horse, but these are allowed to fit closely to the corners of your horse's mouth. The larger the side or the lateral part of these bits is, the more you have lateral influ influence on your horse's head. For example, if you have a horse in jumping that tends to fall out while riding turns, you could use um, D-ring or full cheek bits um, in order to, to use the lateral surface that helps you while turning. And then there's also bits with leverage effect. For example, three ring bits, gag bits, pelum bits, waymouth bits. Um, many people use these bits for stronger horses and don't know why, because they know it's a stronger bit and they just try it. The reason why you should use a bit with a leverage effect is that, um, as you can see on these images, on, on the left side you have a normal horse with a loose rein. In the middle you have a normal contact and when you pull the rein you act on the tongue. If the horse lifts the head or Get, gets really strong and um, you pull the rein in this situation, you will have no influence at all because you don't act on the tongue, but you will pull the mouthpiece in the hollow of your mouth or even in front of the molars. But not, you will have no influence point where you can get control about your horse. So this is why you would use a bit with the leverage effect. I'm going to switch to the other screen again. For example, if you use a pelum, you have the cheek piece attached here, going over the cheek, over the ears. You have the reins attached here and there. And if you pull the lower rein, you will add pressure to the pole over the cheek piece. And if you exert pressure on the pole, the horse will react with lowering the head. And if the horse lowers the head, you can, you will have this situation again and you can act on the tongue. So as soon as the horse reacts on you using a leverage bit, you want to use the normal bit and not the leverage effect. So this is the purpose of the bit. And uh, there was one question um, before we started the presentation about Weymouth bits and the length of the shanks. And this, of course, also applies to Pelham bits. There are shorter and longer shanks. The shorter the shank, the less pressure you exert on the pole because um, the longer the leverage action is, the more pressure you can you can put to, to the pole. But the shorter the pelum is or the waymouth, the quicker the reaction. So people tend to, to call short shanks also baby waymouth bits. But this is not correct because um, the pressure on the pole is less but the reaction is much quicker. And this applies for um, a Pelham as well as for a Weymouth. And of course, also for three ring bits, 
um, the longer the leverage, the more pressure you can exert on the pull. As I said, we will focus on the shapes of different mouthpieces today. And you can see a nice overview or a comparison of single jointed, double jointed and marlin mouth bits here. And as you can see, the single jointed bits have one joint in the middle. And if you pull the reins, the bit will lift up a little into this direction. And the pressure points or the pressure is mainly on these two points on the edges of the tongue and not as much on the middle of the tongue. Whereas the double jointed bits have three parts and a lozenge in the middle and two parts on the side. And the difference is that um, you have the same pressure on your hands and the same pressure is not distributed mainly on the edges of the tongue as on the single jointed bit but on three parts of the tongue you have pressure here pressure here and pressure here so it's more evenly over the whole tongue than the single jointed bit mullen mouth bits or straight bars have or transmit even pressure onto the whole tongue the problem with these bits is if you if you use a rigid mullen mouth bits for, bit for example you have um, you should be able to ride your horse with both hands because if you pull the rein on one side it it's like driving a bike. You pull the rein on one side and the bit goes forward on the other side. So uh, it might tilt and um, get uncomfortable for the horse. So these bits, mullen mouth bits, especially rigid mullen mouth bits, are only um, meant to, to be ridden with a contact, a close and normal contact and steady contact on both hands. It is very, very hard or almost impossible to do to write flexion and bending with um, mal mouth bits. So I think everybody remembers the skull um, of the horse and now we can see the tongue inside and as I said the tongue fills the whole oral cavity. This horse has a normal to thick tongue and on the right side the bit that is inser inserted in there is a 20 millimeter thick bit and you can see that there already is contact to the palate of your horse and the, the palate is very very sensitive also so what you can see is that this bit is too thick for this horse. Of course, um, the tongue is, is a muscle and you will always have, on a, on a loose rein, you will always have contact to uh, the pellet. But the thicker the bit is, the more likely you have uh, pressure points. So contact is fine, but you never want any pressure or pressure points on your horse. And this is a double jointed bit 20 millimeter thickness. What you can see here is a double jointed bit with 18 millimeter thickness and you can see the upper jaw in the upper image and um, the lower jaw in the lower image and this bit is a double jointed bit of the I, I call it old shape and this was um, before we have done the study, the research we were talking about with the veterinarian Hano uh, University of Hanover. And you can see quite clearly um, A is the pellet bone, B is the blood lines that run below the pellet bone, 
see is the little very very thin and uh, mucosa covering the palate. D is the tongue and um, in the lower picture you can see the lower jaw and the lower jaw bones marked with E. And you can see that this bit 80 millimeter thickness um, presses into the palate and into the tongue. Well, the tongue is normal, um, but we have underneath the tongue, we have the lower jaw bones. You see right here. These bones of this horse are quite round, but these um, bones can also, depending on the horse, be rather spiky. And um, this is a quite thick tongue. If you have a horse with a spiky lower jawbone and a thin tongue. And you can see the eyes of the joint are lying here, directly over the lower jawbones. So if you have a spiky lower jawbone, a too thick bit and a thin tongue, you will have a horse that will be unhappy with the bit because it's just very uncomfortable. Because we found out that the distance between here and there on average is three and a half centimeters, we have changed the double jointed bits. And um, these are called the KK Ultra bits. What we have done is we have shortened the middle link um, from four centimeters. This was the old shape you could see on the image to two and a half centimeters. So it would lie in the middle of the tongue and not directly over the lower jaw bones. And what we also did was we have rotated the eyes of the joint to the front by 45 degrees. The good thing about it is that we don't have these joints upright pressing onto the tongue onto the lower bars but we have them lying flat on the whole tongue so we have shortened the, the middle link and turned the joint forwards to make it more comfortable for the horse and what you can see here is the difference between the common double jointed bit or the old shape and the KK Ultra bits on the right side. So these are upright in direction to the palate and the lower jaw bones. And as you can see here, this is four centimeters wide and the joints almost press on the edges of the tongue. Whereas the shortened middle link lies more in the middle of the tongue and the eyes of the joint are flat. So this is more comfortable and anatomically adapted to your horse. I will just go back to the, uh, this image first and um, would like you to focus on the single jointed image. As you can see, the single jointed bit has one bit in the middle, uh, one joint in the middle, and the eyes of the joint are also um, 90 degrees. You can see that this bit does not lie in the middle of the tongue. I will change the color here so you can see it better. So the impact on this side is larger than the impact on this side because you have a shorter shank. And this is normal for single jointed bits. The problem is that you have uneven pressure on both sides. And this is why we have changed our single jointed bits with the tornado bits um, and have forwarded the um, the link or the joint in the middle. I have samples to show you. I'm sorry it's not nice and clean samples, but due to Corona, I'm not in the office right now. What you can see here, 
This bit is the normal single jointed snaffle. You have one side longer than the other and 90 degrees middle joint. And compared to that, we have the tornado bit. And you can see the joint in the middle has been turned and twisted. And therefore, we have an equal contact surface on both tongue sides. And that, of course, um, helps you to um, better communicate with your horse because you have the same contact surface on both sides. And you can see it quite clear on this image. The new tornado bits, they have an abrasive surface in the middle. This is what, what the not shiny part. This is only to demonstrate that the joint in the middle has been turned forward. And you can clearly see the difference between the normal standard bit on this side and the tornado bit on this side. You can see that this joint is upright in direction to the pellet, whereas this joint has been turned forward and you have a more equal contact surface on both sides. Um, I think everybody of you has uh, heard of the nutcracker action of single jointed bits. Um, I would like to emphasize that this can only happen if the bit is way too thick or way too large because usually um, you will have enough distance to the pellet. But if you have a horse with a very, very flat pellet or a very large bit, um, you would be more likely to have a nutcracker action or a contact in the pellet on this bit than on this bit because you have the turn joint uh, and safe space in direction to the pellet. So this is a very, very nice and easy bit. And this bit comes not only in Sensogan, we also um, have it in the more reasonable quality of stainless steel. After we have um, invented and developed the KK Ultra and Tornado bits, we have made another bit style which is very, very successful and which is called Dynamic RS bits. All Dynamic RS bits also have the 45 degree angulation the KK Ultra bits and the Tornado bits have. So you also have the equal impact on the single jointed bits and the nice um, shortened and angled middle link in the double jointed bits. The different difference, uh, the main difference between these bit shapes is that the KK Ultra bits have straight um, a straight mouthpiece, whereas the dynamic RS bits have a shaped mouthpiece. That means that you have more space for the tongue. Due to the ergonomic shape that is um, made to be perfectly fitted between tongue and pellet, you have the advantage that especially horses with a small oral cavity or a thick tongue um, are um, are um, have more space for the tongue so you won't have any pressure into the tongue because it is nice and smooth and rounded so you are able to give very soft and effective instructions um, because you have um, yeah um, or it is more comfortable for your horse, especially for horses with thick tongues and small oral cavities. Um, it is also suitable for sensitive horses because it is um, ergonomically shaped and perfectly adapted to your horse's mouth. But because it is um, slightly curved, it is also a little bit more direct for sensitive horses than the KK Ultra and Tornado bits. 
As you can see, these bits all come in combinations with different mouse pieces. So we have a large selection um, of mouthpiece and cheek piece combinations for every occasion, for every discipline. The latest invention uh, we have developed at Sprenger is the so-called Novo Contact Bits. And um, this is also based on the study uh, of the measurement of the horse's heads, because we found that a lot of horses do not have a lot of space left for the bit. But uh, as I said, everybody in Germany learns that the thicker the bit, the softer it is. We have found that it's this is not the case if you get pressure points in the pellet because you don't have uh, a lot of oral cavity. But it is true that the thinner the bit is, the more direct you act on the tongue. And um, for horses with um, a small oral cavity, but that really, really like thicker bits because um, you have a larger surface, we have invented these Novo contact bits. And what we have done is we made it flat. That means that the you can see the contact surface that lies on the tongue is twice as thick as on a normal bit. So if you compare this one, thick part, to a normal bit, which is uh, way thinner. But the thick part only lies on the tongue because it's twice as thick, but thin between tongue and pellet. This is how it lies between the tongue and the pellet. So there's no pressure in the pellet because it is only 16 millimeters like a normal bit. And um, due to this oval shape, um, the pressure you put on the tongue from the rain aid is transmitted over a surface that is twice as large. So it is very, very soft for the horse. And these bits have been tested also by our test riders, of course. Um, and uh, we found that especially the single jointed bit is perfectly suitable for um, sensitive mouth horses um, that are um, very, very light in the contact and do not take the contact confidently. The double jointed bits are tested also for sensitive horses, but for horses that sometimes, for example, if you um, ride to a fence and um, the horse tends to get a bit stronger then, or if you um, ride different um, lections, like for example, collecting your horse and the horse tends to get strong just um, in, in some occasions, uh, these bits are perfect because they are still soft, but a bit stronger um, when you need to pull the rein and get more control. And I will also show you the double jointed one. And the difference is that uh, you also have the flat part on the tongue and not too much space taken uh, between tongue and palate. But you also have like the front part gets a little bit narrower, as you can see here. It's still soft and smooth and rounded. But if you pull the rein and the horse gets strong, you use the, the thinner surface when you have a strong contact. But as soon as the horse gets softer again, you have the nice flat surface on the tongue and a very, very soft connection again. So this bit is perfectly, or these bits are perfectly suitable for horses that are very sensitive or sensitive horses that tend to get strong, but are too sensitive for being ridden with stronger bits. Because all of these bits have been anatomically shaped and adapted, it is important that you put the bits in correctly. And this is uh, what the arrow on the outside of the bits mean. So you always want the arrow to point forwards on the left-hand side. Or if you have um, a shine bright bit, which is um, uh, 
which is a bit with a sparkling crystal on one side. We have the arrow on the front side of the mouse piece that should be on the left hand side pointing downwards. So there's nothing really, really bad happening when you have it upside down, but this is how it's meant to be and this is uh, what it's created for to be the most suitable and comfortable for your horse. So that was a quick overview about our um, research, about the anatomical conditions in your horse's mouth and about um, the most uh, successful inventions we have developed based on this research. So I hope it was interesting for you and uh, I look forward to your questions. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. That, that was, uh, I, I was very lucky enough to be able to see the rehearsal um, of this, and I took and I made just as many notes tonight as I did in the rehearsal each time I I listen to you Dyker uh, you always provide me with with something else um, that I can go go away and work on so um, and and looking at some of the feedback as well that we're getting Dyker um, your English was was really good tonight as it's been mm -hmm. throughout I know you're a bit worried about coming in tonight and making the presentation given that it wasn't in German um, but uh, again thank you so much for your time um, tonight or Australian time tonight um, and uh, yeah everyone thank you for tuning in um, and Dyker we look forward to seeing you uh, in in Australia sometime soon uh, obviously on the other side of coronavirus um, and yeah if anyone's got any questions uh, about tonight's presentation or if you um, want to, uh, me to forward those questions on to Dyker as I said please send an email to Dale that's D-A-L-E at shabalo.com.au and uh, yeah, thank you all again and have a lovely evening. All right, um, I have um, put you a link uh, in the presentation. I hope you can all see it. And this is a download link for a brochure with um, some very easy to understand information, uh, you need to find the right bit. And it also describes the function of different side parts of your bits. So if you're interested in that, just click download here. And um, thank you again for your attention and your interest and have a good evening. <laughs>